Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is Friday, July 16th, 2010, and uh, sorry about the issues with the Stock Twits TV, but let's go ahead and take a look at these markets. The S&P 500 obviously had a pretty rough day here today, and it sold off on a little bit heavier volume than what we've been seeing uh, over the last 20 days uh, average. That's what that purple line is on the volume down below. Uh, this morning on uh, Alpha Trends, I had said that it's impressive the way that this market has been holding up near this 50-day moving average, and that as long as we we had remained above the uh, five-day moving average as an orange line in the 108 area that we wanted to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers well this is why your plans always have to uh, you know include a backup plan and, and, and be able to have some flexibility in your thought uh, process because the late day uh, rally from from uh, Thursday it was induced by the uh, Goldman Sachs and the uh, British Petroleum news uh, obviously we had gapped lower this morning and from there uh, you know the market sold off very quick uh, to me, you had to be chasing it to, to get short, and that wasn't the proper thing, I thought. But, but a little bit at, later in the morning, uh, we had seen that the market rallied up just uh, near that 108 area, and it was still below the declining volume weighted average price. So as I said to the subscribers, we wanted to get short below this 10760 level, and what we were looking for was a move down towards about the 107 area, which had been uh, prior support. Obviously, that didn't hold either, and you know the, the prior support levels are, are good reference points like moving averages but they're not something to trade off of as, as I always like to say they're an area to look for uh, potential support once again but obviously the market continued right down through that with the next uh, significant area that uh, we would expect to uh, be a likely area of support to be found would be this 106 level so perhaps on Monday uh, we we see a quick sell-off down towards that and then a bounce that creates a lower high or what we might see is a, is a uh, is, is that the market rallies uh, Monday morning and it falls short or touches the declining five-day moving average and from there what we want to do is we want to revert back to uh, kind of what we had seen uh, uh, you know earlier uh, or later last month which is when we're below the declining five-day moving average well those rallies uh, are guilty till proven innocent and we want to look for opportunities to sell short as the market re-exerts itself to the downside with protection, protective stops just above those uh, short-term higher lows. So looking at a weekly time frame, you can see here uh, that we have, um, let's just kind of change the scaling a little bit so we can bring it into focus a little bit more clearly. But we do have a series of lower highs and lower lows. It still looks like it's in existence. Now, the uh, 105 area is going to be a uh, 104 and a half uh, area really is is an area that we've seen uh, active uh, important support this year. We had seen a quick move down through that level and from that failed move lower uh, we got our fast move higher that again last Wednesday is really when it got back above that five day moving average and created that pattern of higher highs and higher lows that we were looking at um, but now we look at the market and it seems as though it's shifting back to lower highs and lower lows below a declining 50 day moving average as well as a weekly time frame that looks like a mess so this this area that we, the market had found support at is if if you remember was the 38.2 percent retracement of the March lows from last year to this year's highs that's what this level is right here uh, and and also if we take a look at the volume weighted average price from those lows we'd seen that that was uh, right about it it's right about in that same area now it's moved a little bit because obviously we got more volume this week but this is you know where we uh, where we found support once and in a downtrend what we have obviously is we don't you know the market doesn't fall apart completely but we have a, a series of lower highs and lower lows and that's where it looks like perhaps this is the beginning of the next move that if it does take us down through that 10 uh, you know the 102 uh, lows 101 whatever uh, what, what were these lows uh, let's look together 10113 that's right because 10111 was the exact Fibonacci but when we break down through those and we're still five points away from it obviously five and a half points but but what I'm setting up is the bigger picture that that might unravel here over the next uh, several months maybe which is uh, if we continue uh, on the daily time frame to exert this lo these lower highs and lower lows well then that'll bring itself to uh, uh, lower lows here on the weekly time frame and if the 
38.2% retracement level is broken, then I think that we've we've got a pretty real a real good shot of probably heading down towards this 50% retracement, which is down let's just call it $95, um, because there's not a lot of trading that occurred within there as well. So there's not a lot of price memory in there, and prices could easily fall into this little vacuum. So uh, you know the the fear is always uh, the 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 moves to the downside are generally faster because they're uh, more emotionally driven. That is, fear uh, is a uh, stronger motivator than than greed really is. And uh, you, you know, we had seen, uh, you know, what about the magnitude of this rally? Well, you could say that that would might have been driven by fear as well because we had seen short sellers who kind of were disbelieving of it at first, and then they, you know, kind of got bought in and then there was the fear once again that hey the market's going positive for the year uh, year to date uh, now I've got to get invested and that sort of thing so the fear of being left behind as well I think helped uh, drive some of the uh, the buying on that recent rally and now people are saying wait a minute I'm going to be the one here left holding the bag so Anyways, the S&P is obviously remains damaged. It was a nice rally while it lasted, but it was a counter trend rally that is counter to the daily time frame. And counter trend rallies, as we know, and we we said that you know the, the declining rallies to with a declining 50-day moving average generally do fail, and that's what we had here. So uh, the Nasdaq, um, this market had gotten up just about to the 61.8% retracement. Um, of the uh, or it just got you know was toying with it I guess you could say and this prior support near that 45 and a half was really uh, the level that, uh, that that this market was finding trouble with which of course was the 50 day moving average as well and on the weekly time frame or I'm sorry on this other you know it's it's also right about where we have that 200 day moving average so the 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average are basically in the same spot we'll probably get a crossover to that next week and we'll see a whole nother round of people talking about the death cross and that sort of thing but let's just stay focused on the you know intermediate term levels which uh, today we were looking for I I'd said even midday today that I, I thought that the, the 45 level would likely hold because of options expiration well obviously it didn't we had seen it, it continue lower and uh, you know you don't trade opinion you trade what you see not what you think and with the market obviously stuck below that declining volume weighted average price all day today uh, there was no reason to be long in here so um, Again, it's about talking, you know, it's about looking at multiple time frames and, and saying, where do the odds favor uh, a trade? And, and you know, on the, on the short term today, what we'd seen uh, the, you know, yesterday we had seen a slightly lower high. Then we had a lower low at the five-day moving average. Now all these markets are having, are below that five-day moving average. So they're all now guilty till proven innocent on the intermediate term time frame. So if we get a rally up towards that 45 level, I wouldn't get excited about it. I would be looking for it to fail. I wouldn't short there necessarily, but I'd be looking for it to fail and then to sell short weeks weakness uh, below that level. The Russell 2000 had been really the weakest group and we can see that also using the Fibonacci because we we see that the Russell had gotten almost precisely up to that 61.8 percent retracement whereas the other markets rallied up through it and the financials and semiconductors uh, pretty much gained a hundred percent of that uh, June decline back. But anyways the, uh, the, the, um, the Russell uh, was you know having more trouble uh, yesterday in the prior days uh, and just really uh, no bounce in there whatsoever today well a slight bounce off of daily s2 in here today but uh, you know this market got hit harder down 3.6 percent you look at this daily time frame and uh, let's compress it a little bit uh, but this you know this area still looks like it's it's probably going to get tested again uh, near about 58 and a half and and I would think it's it's likely to uh, to fail that we do have a, uh, you know these these lower highs and lower lows in here so there's no reason to think that this support will hold or this prior level of support but uh, maybe the market continues down towards about 54 uh, and I'm not talking about next week I'm talking about longer term what we want to do is uh, see a rally we you know you don't want to sell short at 61 after it's just dropped like this we want to see a rally we don't want to short the rally but we want to then short as it breaks back down again because we have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows uh, below a declining five-day moving average which is what we had seen uh, in in the uh, middle of last month the semiconductor had a uh, 
Um, you know what? I don't even know. Did they close higher on the week? It looks like they did close higher on the week, uh, barely. But uh, this market really, you know, 29 is a big level of support in this market. 25 and a half is is a big range that it's in, and it's back to that middle of that range, really. So the so if you look at the semiconductors on this daily time frame, it's really more neutral than anything, uh, especially when you see all these moving averages crossing back and forth. But obviously, there's some huge moves in here, and what we do is we take a look at the shorter time frame analysis to say well what stage are we in well we were in a stage two uptrend stage three distribution stage four decline accumulation markup now we're in distribution and just starting a new decline leg lower within this range though when you look at the daily time frame it's it's a range bound market but it doesn't mean you can't trade it when you look at these shorter term time frames because there's some beautiful trends higher highs and higher lows more neutral and then lower highs and lower lows so we want to see a rally perhaps up to about 28 in here you know that falls short of 28 and then see another nice pattern of lower highs and lower lows and we'll see if that takes us maybe down towards the low end of that uh, 25 and a half dollar uh, range that, that has been support the financials uh, they did make it above that 50-day moving average for three days and again it's it's the direction of the 50-day moving average that's more important than where the market is in relation to it and we'd seen that $15 level. What I was talking about was a po uh, possible scenario, and it's still uh, possible. I don't think it's likely, but a possible scenario of this being a left shoulder, uh, this being a head, and this being over here, the beginnings of a uh, right shoulder of an inverted head and shoulder pattern. Um, anyways, that it's, it's much too early to look for that because obviously the important thing here, the most important thing is that that $15 level is resistance that's that's where we've seen the resistance on the weekly time frame we had seen uh, a couple weeks ago before this rally developed that this support level that people were watching at, at 1360 was briefly broken from that failed move lower came that fast move higher but we still have the pattern of lower highs and lower lows intact so maybe this next uh, decline is the one that brings us down towards uh, uh, 12 and a half or so. So the financials, um, tough day percentage wise, down 4.2%. You can see it was just a steady grind lower, uh, just a, a, a continuous liquidation of the financials throughout the day. And again, when we have that happening, when we have this just you know this this steady lower highs and lower lows below a declining volume weighted average price it makes no sense to go in and try and say well hey this should become support right here here's this prior resistance was support so it should be support again that's you know that's that's a foolish strategy in my mind it's something that this morning you would have looked at and said hey let's see if it can bounce here if it can do something like this and then break that short-term little resistance, then maybe you buy it. But obviously, uh, you know that didn't materialize. And, and but but those are the types of scenarios you want to create in your mind to say, okay, under what circumstances would I get long? And if it develops, then you take the trade and manage risk. But obviously, it didn't develop. We're below a declining five-day moving average, and now the financials uh, are looking like they're you know possibly heading back down towards these recent lows again. Um, another uh, group that's been having trouble recently, not really. A, a group but uh, gold continues to be uh, trading pretty heavy here and uh, we look at that weekly time frame I still think that a test of the 113 level is uh, what looks likely in here and probably that 200 day moving average uh, it probably overshoots that trend line and down towards the 200 day moving average so I don't think that gold is uh, you know so this moving average is down at about 1 uh, 111 uh, 50 um, but and I think that's probably likely for the future uh, of GLD and then we'll see if it if it holds support otherwise um, it's you know it's making this pattern of lo uh, the lower high and, and now lower low in here so uh, gold is is weak uh, subscribers we're looking at uh, the GDX this week and we are short some uh, uh, Kinross gold this is what I think is the uh, you know, one of the weakest gold mining stocks. You look at that weekly time frame, it's in a uh, stage four decline and uh, looking like it should continue lower. So there's a lot of damage done this week. Um, let's see, uh, you know, the retailers continue to, to look terrible. They found resistance at the 20 day moving average. And this group is really, uh, I've, I've spoken about this one uh, on, on previous uh, webinars and that, but, uh, you know, continues to be the, the real sore spot uh, in the market, uh, in my mind. And uh, another group that looks like it's it could be really finally, uh, you know, the second shoe that was going to drop all last year uh, is this IYR. It's still not 
fully bearish yet it's kind of more choppy up in here but uh, uh, we had seen this resistance at the 50-day moving average we have the 10 below the 20 the 20 below the 50 I think this is a good group to start monitoring for you know rallies up to prior support that fail and the best way to really trade that in my mind is the SRS now the SRS if you look at the daily chart and that it's, it's a mess because it's you know one of these foolish inverted funds that you can't hold longer term but shorter term you look at it it broke a little bit of resistance here it's above that five-day moving average which is starting to rise so maybe this this you know comes down acts as support in here and then begins to rally anyways it's the inverse IYR so it's gonna look you know opposite of that um, but anyways that'll do it I hope everyone has a good weekend and uh, I'll talk to you again next week